In 2017, in South Africa, during one of their tourist safari trips, they encountered one of the most remarkable scenes in the animal world. A female lion was out hunting for her pride, and she spotted a wild donkey on its own. She stealthily approached it, pounced on it, and killed it. Afterward, members of her pride emerged one after another to share in the delicious meal. However, all of a sudden, without warning, two of the females attacked two young males within the pride in a very peculiar scene. But why would this lead them to turn on members of their own group? Could it be because their fathers, mothers, or aunts had shared in the hunt? What fate awaited these two young males? Hello, and welcome to a new video. But before we start, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can receive our videos right away. Among all wild cats, there's only one that lives in groups. The lion. They form prides, as experts call them, usually consisting of three to four dominant males and a group of females, typically outnumbering the males. The pride also includes their cubs. However, it's rare to find more than four males in one group. This, in itself, raises a question. How come such a large group of lions has only four males? Do lionesses not have cubs? In reality, the social structure within a lion group works as follows. The dominant males are responsible for protecting the group and their territory, while the females are responsible for hunting and caring for the young. It's an interdependent system where it's challenging to survive alone, whether it's protection from other predators like hyenas or obtaining food through hunting. This is because the majority of prey animals that lions hunt are usually stronger and faster than a single lion, meaning that prey represents a real challenge to lions. Animals like elephants, giraffes, and African buffaloes are not only large but also considered formidable prey. Even lions, when hunting these animals, usually do it in groups and show caution. However, instead of finding them sticking together for as long as possible, you often see lions turning on each other and continually expelling members from the group. Despite the strangeness of the event observed in South Africa, as we discussed at the beginning of the episode, this behavior of expelling young males is not uncommon among lions as it's written on all young males within any group. Regarding young lions, their eyes are born closed and typically open after about six days. They begin walking at around one month of age, and at three months their mothers start teaching them to hunt. They become an integral part of the group. What's even more surprising is that when a young male reaches around two or three years, the group, including its parents, expels him. This happens without warning, and without any understanding as to why they do this. So why do they do it? And how does a young lion survive without them? Considering that lionesses are among the most loving and nurturing mothers in the animal world, mothers can be very protective of their cubs. In some rare cases, a mother may even refuse to accept the group's ruling of expulsion on her son. However, it's a considerable risk for the lioness. This expulsion isn't limited to young males. Even adults can be expelled from the group and lose their social status in the blink of an eye. This occurs when a young male within the group grows up, becomes stronger, and challenges the dominant male of the group, or an adult male from outside the group challenges the dominant male within it. While you might consider this a matter of survival of the fittest, in the world of lions, it's quite common. Upon being expelled, the young lion faces significant concerns. Firstly, he must be wary of other predators, especially Hena clans, which are the eternal rivals of lions. Secondly, he must find his place. It's relatively easy for him to enter another lion group's territory, either to challenge them or join them. But where does he go now? Does he attempt to enter a group with other lions who may challenge him? Or does he venture into an area occupied by formidable predator groups where they might attack him? Therein lies the dilemma. So, the expelled lion must carefully choose remote and unoccupied areas. But this also reduces his chances of finding food. 
even if we assume that he has an opportunity to hunt a river horse or an African buffalo weighing about 800 kilograms or a ton, what can he do? Does he attack it by himself or with other expelled lions who lack the capabilities required to tackle such a massive prey? Such an endeavor might result in serious injuries that could prove fatal. Moreover, they are not long-distance runners. They usually prefer stalking and ambushing their prey over chasing them. Thus, the solution for the expelled lion is to find a group of lions similar to his and challenge the dominant male. Success is uncertain. Of course, the chances of the expelled lion improve if he is expelled with his brother or one of his same-aged relatives. But even so, this process requires immense courage. Furthermore, the lion, like any other creature, has feelings of fear and often suffers during the period after expulsion due to hunger. Nevertheless, his path forward won't be a bed of roses. To reclaim his territory, he must earn it through his own efforts after facing expulsion and enduring the worst days of his life. The lion must either accept his fate or decide to fight the circumstances, even if it means shedding any lingering benevolence. For the expelled leon, entering a group alone and challenging the leader, regardless of the potential consequences, is the only way to regain his place. If he succeeds, he becomes the leader of the new group. Strangely, the first thing he does is kill any cubs in the group to compel the lionesses to mate with him and produce offspring from his own blood. If the cubs are males, they will face the same fate he did. He himself participates in the expulsion process as they grow up. However, if he thinks that his ordeal is over, he is mistaken. It's easy. A young and powerful lion enters the group and challenges him. The lion can either accept the challenge, exposing himself to the risk of death if he is weaker than the intruder, or he can flee, facing certain death as he won't be able to survive on his own. He won't possess the capabilities to challenge another group's leader. Finally, if you ponder the lives of male lions, you will find that they truly deserve to be the kings they become. It's a legendary tale of an animal enduring the most challenging experiences in life, including betrayal, suffering, and pain. Despite it all, the lion perseveres to rightfully earn the title of a true king, even if he isn't the king of the jungle. Long live the king of the savannah. That's the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit the like button.